So how do we write marketing copy on our website, in our social media that resonates with our ideal client and still feels true to us without us having to feel like we're persuading or hyping things up, right? Because one of my, not one of my clients, many of my clients kind of feel like, well, I'm not very good. You know, they, they, they're, they're telling me I'm not a very good copywriter, George. How do I, you know, get people to get interested in my services and my products? Well, you know, to be honest with you, I don't feel like I'm a good copywriter either, honestly, because I don't like to, I don't like to try to persuade people um, in person <laughs> or on video or over writing. I just would prefer people seek me out because they already want my services and products and I just have to describe what it is, you know? So, so let me give you seven pointers that may help you to, you know, write authentically and yet in a way that describes your services and your products well. Okay, so these are, these are seven things. And I will be sure to put the, the blog post to the video um, below this so that you can read it for yourself. But I'll just kind of talk through the seven. And then uh, if you have any questions, you can comment below. So the first one is vision. Okay, and, and by the way, when I say these seven things, they don't have to necessarily be in order. But you could put them in an order on, on like a web page that describes your services. And it could work well. So... Um, by the way, I'm using my Zoom virtual background. Let me know what you think of this. Um, there's different things I'm going to try over the next you know, few videos, and I, I'd love to know your feedback. Okay, so the first one is vision. Vision is basically what are clients wanting their lives to be like by working with you, by using your services, by buying your product. Okay, what like for example, if you are somebody who coaches people on a particular um, transformational path. Okay. Let's say you're helping them become more confident. Okay. Well, if they become more confident, so what, what's, how is their life going to be different? If they're more confident, will they be able to get a better job? Will they be able to speak up at work better? Will they be able to, uh, speak up in their relationships better or in their family settings? Or will they be able to make choices without, you know, being hesitant and always second guessing? What is the vision for what your services and products can do uh, when people use them well. You see what I mean? When people use your service well, when people use your product well, what happens to their life? Tell us, a, tell us the vision. I mean, basically, it's, it's why, you're, why you're doing it, right? It's the vision is what kind of inspires you and inspires your clients to, to look for you. So one is vision. The second one, and by the way, vision uh, is basically, it's not something you, uh, this is important, it's not what you promise them, it's what you are aiming your service and your product to be going after. So it's, it's not a promise, but it's an aim. And you could say, you could basically, I, I, I always talk about that. I, I say, you know, this, this online course that I'm selling you aims to help you do this. I don't say this online course will make you this way or that way. I just say it's aiming to help you do a certain thing, okay? So that's, first one is vision. Right? And the thing is, all of these seven things I'm going to tell you are not meant to be perfectly written. And this is really important. Don't try to make a perfect vision statement before you put it on your website or put it on social media. Just do what you can now. Just take 15 minutes. 15 minutes. That's all I'm asking you. 15 minutes to answer the question. Why should someone work with me? What is the aim that we're both going towards for their life? Okay, based on my service, what's likely to happen or not, what's likely, not even saying that, but what, what do we hope will happen? What are we aiming for happening? Okay, what's in the realm of possibility that it could happen? Now, we're not going to hype it up like, oh, they could become a millionaire, you know, overnight. It could happen. No, we're talking about things that are, are actually things you believe you could help someone achieve if they are good clients, if they use your service, if they do their homework, if they use the product, whatever it is, in the best case scenario, this is not unusual. This is not, you know, so that's vision. The second one is results. Oh, now what's the difference between vision and results? Vision is a vision. It's the hope. It's the, what we could achieve together if we go in this, this direction. Results are stories of what you actually have achieved, either in your own life or in the life of a client. So results is where you're saying, all right, uh, let me tell you a story of you know, uh, my client, Jane. Now we're gonna keep her anonymous, 
but um, I'm going to tell you the story to see, to show you what's possible. So results are talking about the past. Vision is talking about the future. Okay. So um, again, you're not promising results. You're just telling people, Hey, this is what has happened with clients of mine. And if you work with me, uh, just give you a sense of what is possible. Okay. So you might say, well, George, do I talk about vision? Do I talk about results? If you have results, talk about results. If you don't have results yet, talk about vision. Do you see what I mean? Or if your results um, are okay, but they're not as clear as you'd like them to be, then use vision uh, most of the time to say, this is what I'm aiming for. This is what I, this is what I'm help, trying to help people do. Okay. Uh, three is problems. Problems are basically you describing when a client is trying to reach the vision for their life, right? That, that thing that you love to help them get to, they're going to come across problems. They're going to say, well, I don't know how to do this. Or I try figuring this out, but you know, it didn't work for me. Uh, what are the problems that they are obstacles, the frustrations, the confusions that they're experiencing, the pain that they're experiencing along the way to reaching their vision, right? So, so that's, that's what the problem means. Four is diagnosis. Diagnosis is what is the root cause? What is making their problems the case? Because if they didn't have any problems, they'd be able to reach their vision, you know, without you and without any situations, without any issues, without any uh, negative circumstances happening. But they do have neg negative circumstances, situations, or blocks, or uh, confusions, or things they need to learn, or, you know, um, wrong ideas they have about, you know, they, they have these problems and what is the cause of it, right? So again, let's, let's say you are helping someone to become confident, but their problem is that they believe that, oh, well, I can't become confident because other people are more confident. So if I'm in a situation where other people are confident, then naturally I'm, well, the diagnosis is that, well, I, I'm not a confidence coach, right? So I'm going to make this up, but I'm just giving you an example. You know that, that, well, you know what, well, I'll just say this and then I'll use one of my own examples. The diagnosis for somebody who's not confident could be that um, they don't understand who they really are. Like if they understood that they are a spirit having a human experience and that they are, you know, loved by the creator. And I don't know how, how you coach people to confidence, but I'm just giving you one diagnosis, one possibility that, that a spiritual coach might say. Do you see what I mean? So diagnosis is what's causing the problem that's preventing you from reaching your goal. And when it comes to my own field of marketing, let's say that you are trying to um, uh, make sales, you're trying to get people to buy your course, your online courses, but they're not buying it. Well, that's the, the problem is people aren't buying it, right? The diagnosis is, well, your warm audience isn't big enough. Right? You might've heard me say these things before. Your warm audience is big enough. You, you built the course, you built the marketing and the course without being in partnership with your audience. So you're just, you did it in your own closet and now you're trying to push it down their throats. Of course that doesn't work. So the diagnosis is you didn't do it in partnership with your audience. So, so you see what I mean? So the, the diagnosis is why, why did it happen? And if you could say the diagnosis in a way that makes people go, Oh, that makes a lot of sense. That's why it didn't work. That's what we really want. That's you need to understand uh, your ideal client well enough and to understand their problem well enough and why the problem is happening well enough to be able to speak in a language that they say, thank you for helping me fully grasp why. So that now the problem and why I'm not reaching my vision is not just some kind of random, I'm not good enough. No, now I understand why I'm not able to reach the vision. Now I feel like I can work with you to get to overcome these blocks, right? So diagnosis is really important. Five is process, process. Now, let me say what I've talked about thus far. We talked about vision, one. We talked about pro, uh, results, right? Vision is what you aim to help people achieve. Results is what you already have uh, worked on, uh, what you already have achieved with clients or in your own life. Three is the problems that people have when they try to reach the vision. Fourth is the diagnosis of why they're having those problems. And fifth is the process. The process of what is your modality? Do you use human design? Do you use EFT tapping? Do you use um, you know, voice dialogue? Do you, what, what is the thing you use with your clients in order to help them solve the problems and reach the vision? 
Like you help them, you teach them this exercise, you help them understand this framework. What is your process? So most people, when they do their marketing, they focus very heavily on their process. Well, if you work with me, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to learn this, you're going to, we're going to do this exercise, you're going to learn this framework. And that's fine, but sometimes it's premature to talk about process before you have really talked about the vision uh, or the results and the problems and the diagnosis so that the client, the potential client says, I believe you now. See, before they say, I believe you, and you're talking about your process, they're like, well, okay, that's your process, and that's fine. It doesn't interest me because I don't know if you can really get me to where I want to go. You haven't related to me yet. So the, pro <laughs> the process needs to come later after you can relate to them and go, oh, this is why I need to work with you. Okay, so that's the, that's the, the process, you know, the, the, your, your framework, your step-by-step -step process. Six is your passion. Now, what's the difference? You know, the passion is basically why you're doing your business. You're, you're not doing your business just for the money. Yes, of course, you hope to be able to have a true livelihood. You hope to be able to earn an income by doing the work. But that's not why you're doing this work. You're doing this work because you're really passionate about probably your modality, your process, or the vision that you help people get to, or the results you've seen, or you're, you're passionate about the fact that you have a great diagnosis on the problems that your clients are facing. That's your passion. Talk about the passion. And the passion, what's the difference between the passion and the vision? Okay, the passion is probably your origin story. And I apologize for this, uh, my alarm here going off. Um, your passion is your origin story. This is, you know, why you started becoming so excited about your work. So my passion, right, my origin story, and I've said before, okay, so a couple areas where your passion can come. One is your origin story. One is maybe you are rebelling against some kind of mainstream knowledge that you don't believe is helpful for your ideal clients. So that's really a lot. My, my passion really is around both of those things. My origin story is that I had a successful business, but then realized that it was going against my conscience every day. And I, I, it was um, not fulfilling in my heart. It was inauthentic. And so I had that experience and I said, I don't want that experience anymore. And I see a lot of people who are trying to follow the mainstream models and having an inauthentic experience. And I want to help them find a better way. I want to help them find an authentic experience to build a business and to feel truly fulfilled, knowing that they're being honest, that they are being true to their hearts and that they are feeling like they're really in service and not trying to manipulate others. So, so you could tell what my passion is. And I talk about these things all the time. That's my passion is my origin story, but also my rebelling against the conventional wisdom, you see. So that is, um, uh, I talk about passion all the time. And then finally, seven is credibility. Now, credibility is already going to be formed if you talk about these different things, if you can describe a vision that excites your client, if you can talk about the results that you achieved in your life or in the client's lives that you've served, that's already credible. Or if you can talk about the problems in the way that they go, yep, that's what I'm going through. And if you give a diagnosis, I go, wow, that's why I'm going through that. You are already credible. And then you can talk about the process, uh, process and passion, a little bit less about credibility. The, the first four are more. But besides all those things, it's also important for you to mention more traditional measures of credibility, such as how many years have you been studying this topic? Because did you just start yesterday? No, you didn't. Did you just start a week ago? No, you probably have been studying this stuff for at least months, probably years. And you've been trying to solve this problem for yourself or maybe for other people for at least months, if not years. Maybe you have a certification of some kind or multiple certifications. Okay. Maybe you've had the privilege of learning from some famous person, right? Maybe you've read a lot of books. I don't know. What is your credibility in the mainstream way? You know, or maybe you have some numbers to share with us. Maybe you have, when clients work with you, they experience a 200% improvement in their relationship, you know, or whatever it is you, you've measured, right, in, in, your, in, your, in your work. So credibility is all those different things. So again, the seven areas are vision. Okay, these are things that you can literally spend 15 minutes per section writing about. And once you've written these things, you've got your services page. Yes, how do you people work with you? I've just given you the template for how to describe these things.
right? Um, so you could spend 15 minutes each writing these seven sections, or you could take one section at a time and make it into a blog post or a video. You can make, or you can combine multiple sections. You can talk about the vision and the problems that people have to try to reach that vision. That could be one blog post or a video. Or you could talk about the, um, the diagnosis and your passion for, for that diagnosis. And, right, you could combine these different things and the different combinations to make content. So the seven things I've told you are both how to write your website, how to write your services page, rather, maybe your website, different parts of your website, but also each of these or the combinations thereof are content pieces. And the last thing I'll say is be careful of perfectionism. Writing these things is not a one time. I worked really hard, George, and I wrote my vision or I wrote my diagnosis. It's not a one time thing. It is a continually coming back to it, you know, month after month to make it even better. So right now, put something up on your website after 15 minutes of writing your vision, put it up on your website. Seriously, do it. And then a month later, come back and go, hmm, how can I make that vision statement even better? How can I make my diagnosis blog post even better? Do it now. And then every month you come back and go, or whatever, every few weeks, every month, every few months, you come back and go, how can I make that one better? And that's how you move forward with marketing, copywriting. That's authentic, not trying to persuade anybody, but sharing your passionate vision, passionate results, passionate diagnosis process, you know, all that problems and all those things you're sharing authentically. You're not trying to persuade anybody, but you're trying to say, Hey, listen, this is what I believe. This is what I believe. This is what I believe now. This is how I'm going to describe it now. And then I'm going to keep improving on this over time. Right? So I hope this is helpful and uh, please let me know what you think about this. If you have any um, examples to share with me, please go ahead and chat below. Uh, if, yeah. Feel free to publicly journal on these seven areas below the video. Um, if you have any questions, you can comment below and, um, thank you so much for joining me. All right. My name is George Cow, authentic business coach. I love talking about authentic marketing and how to build your business in a way that really, um, uh, something that you can love and keep loving for a long, long time. Hope this helps and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.